please understand that any advice in today's session is of a general nature only and that your personal circumstances have not been taken into consideration. Okay, so it has arrived. It is the week where we finally find out if there's going to be an interest rate rise in 2015 or if it's not. We've been anticipating this or we've been here and there talking about this probably since around about March of this year um, but finally finally it's here now last week uh, there was quite a bit of data that came out last week and a lot of it came out very very positive um, essentially painting the road for an interest rate rise so there's really not much in terms of uh, obstacles for it to happen uh, every, most analysts that have um, made an opinion regarding a yes or a no, it's about 99% that it's going to happen. So when something is so expected, we now need to know how to play it in the market. Now, just in case anybody is not aware of what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Fed rate uh, decision, which will happen in our time um, around about 6 o'clock in the morning on Thursday morning okay so it, it's actually the 16th of December over there in, in the in the US but this is where we basically find out now this particular week uh, well the week that's just gone by we saw the euro rally significantly um, I guess it's a, a little bit of um, players in the market positioning themselves for this FOMC rate decision. Also, the board members, Mr. Mario Draghi's uh, board members came out and contradicted what he had previously said, which was um, that there's a high probability of further uh, and more stimulus for the euro. And basically, they came out and said the opposite to that, which in, in essence created a little bit of a rally. And we'll have a bit of a look at that when we look at the charts. Um, it was that rally that stopped us out of a fundamental trade that we had placed um, in the market last week. So all of a sudden, this week is really all about anticipation. It's probably the last good moving week in the markets for the year. Okay, and the markets, we, will, we should see a lot of positioning uh, and anticipation. If, if the market starts to get spooked, you'll see up right up until that announcement, uh, we may move in one direction. That's basically players uh, or that are positioned themselves in the market with healthy, profitable trades that are closing out positions because they want to lock in profits and things of that nature. So that tends to move the market a little bit as well. All right. Um, I guess for this week, in terms of data that we got coming out, we we have a lot on the euro front. We have German and French PMI here, and uh, we have the German uh, sentiment, economic sentiment. We have the info climate, and of course, uh, pretty much any pair against the US dollar this week is going to be vulnerable to what the Fed does. So um, I believe probably the Euro USD is probably the one that's going to be directly the most affected by uh, data this particular week. On the Aussie front, I believe they, oh, it's just slipped my mind what it's actually called, but that when they review the budget or they add to the budget this week so that usually can have a little bit of an effect on our Aussie dollar of course the Aussie dollar has been under the hammer due to the commodities and mainly that um, the fall in prices in oil oil is is an instrument that we haven't looked at um, in recent times I might pull it up today and have a bit of a, a look but basically we I believe we got as low as 3580 or something along those lines uh, dollars per barrel and essentially what's happening over there is you have the Saudis who are not 
stop in production and you got the Iranian and Iraqis who are also not stopping production so there's a massive oversupply and basically everybody's trying to see where's this floor going to be um, yeah, I've, I've heard talks of you know 35 is a, is a big psychological one but uh, it wouldn't surprise me if you know we, we saw a 29 or something along the, those lines it's been pretty much in free fall it's affected a lot of the commodity based currencies uh, the one that's been the most affected is probably the US CAD uh, the Canadian uh, currency has weakened significantly on the back of that as well. Um, the other major thing that happened last week was uh, Kiwi dollar. We said it was going to be the one that was under the most influence and it definitely was. We had a, a rate cut with RBNZ and then the, the market went both directions uh, when that happened as well. So let's, um, I guess, this is the highlight. There is a lot of data this week. Uh, we have from the GBP, we've got unemployment figures uh, that's coming out in that sector. And that and tomorrow we've got CPI figures there for the GBP. So please take note of the ones that will affect you. Again, these times are in my local base, uh, local time, which is Australian Eastern Standard uh, Daylight Savings Time. Um, let's have a little bit of a talk about how we can play uh, the Fed rate decision because this is probably the, the biggest talking point for the week uh, and it's been the biggest talk talking point probably for the last month and a half, two months, uh, even you know for the entirety of the year it's been there or thereabouts. Now, when the market is so expected a rate rise uh, at such high proportions, uh, effectively it's probably already f factored a rate rise into the, the current pricing, meaning a lot of people, for example, if, if you and I for, were of the opinion that uh, it was going to go uh, in one direction, we're probably already in the trade. We've already made our move and we've entered the market and in fact when we enter the market we've already priced that in so if everybody starts to do the same thing we start to move the market and, and the price is already factored in so it's going to come down to how much they rise whether they don't raise and what their outlook for the first quarter for next year is so the amount that we're expecting is 0.25 Okay, so this is what the market is expecting. Should there be no 0 0.25 and it was and it remains unchanged, I'm pretty sure that this is going to uh, put a shock through the market, and we should see US dollar weakness significantly because of all the people that have already priced it in. All, all of a sudden, if it doesn't go ahead, we should see US dollar weakness. Now, if we get a number that is not 0.25 but it's greater than 0.25, say like point, uh, 30 basis points or even 50 basis points, that would also, uh, this would create big US dollar strength because the market wasn't expecting it so much, so then the confidence all of a sudden comes into the market, everybody jumps on board. Okay, so a bigger than 0.25 number could give us very, very good strength. If the number comes in as expected and we actually do get 0.25, we'll probably see some movement okay in in the market but what becomes key now is what they say with their projections for the first quarter all right so we ha have to listen carefully to the minutes and essentially hear what what they indicate if they're of a hawkish nature or if they're quite satisfied that they think that the 0.25 increase will be sufficient Right. If they indicate that we're going to do this 0.25 increase and we'll keep a, a, a careful eye on the market and if need be we are ready to do something about it, if they give that type of a message we should still see a further uh, push on the US dollar strength even without uh, with the expected 0.25 rate rise. It's a little bit tricky how you play these ones. Uh, if you've never uh, seen this or, or ex had um, such exposure to significant news like this, if anybody has uh, CNBC or anything like that, uh, you can get it for, for your Foxtel. Wake up and watch it. 
okay this one they should broadcast it live and um, that you'll get the what I'm talking about here is basically this one here at about 6:30 when they come out sorry the statement here which happens at, simultaneously with the announcement of the figure okay all right let's move on let's bring on our charts let's see what we've got as always if you have questions just type them in and I will make sure that I address them for you let us start off with the Aussie dollar let's have a look now we've been tracking this converging triangle and we're still inside now we did get to that top level uh, that we were kind of thinking that we would get there but it had not been confirmed we did get there and unfortunately we didn't really get a, a nice trade opportunity or a window into trade it so this week considering that we're thinking we're going to get a rate rise what may happen is we, we're probably going to test test this boundary okay the, depending the beauty of price action trading is that I if I'm going to be strict and trade price action I cannot take the trade until the candle finishes so it doesn't matter what happens on this news announcement I cannot take the trade then and there I have to wait for that candle to finish so if I do get something that looks like a little bit like this and let's say they raise their rates and we get this big candle like that well then until that candle finishes I I can't take the trade so I will it will leave this kind of evidence on my chart and then I would be ready to execute on the opening of the very next candle so don't be afraid um, only if you're willing to trade the hype uh, our price action is still going to protect us in many ways now it doesn't mean that we can't get stopped out we can still get stopped out but we don't enter into the hype and the euphoria of the moment is what I'm basically trying to see uh, say sorry so I think we need to wait for our Aussie to come back to this line and it looks like it probably will this week and this could be the week that we breach right through it and then we could be ready to trade it in a downward direction okay so we need to watch that one um, normally uh, if I was to consider taking a trade inside of a trend you can see that I've got my 24 and my 12 EMAs and we've got their crossing right there so technically I could be looking for longs in this area through here um, there's there hasn't been an opportunity the only one that actually popped up was this one over here a little uh, last week or the week before um, but there hasn't been any and it doesn't look like there's going to be one right now either so even if we were applying that principle uh, to this particular chart you would be you wouldn't have a trade to to trigger in this direction okay so I guess for this week the Aussie dollar it looks like we need to wait for the boundaries what may happen also is we, we may come back to that boundary and we may shoot it through in that direction okay so be open-minded even though I'm expecting on the downside I'm still open-minded enough to see that if the trade shows up in the other direction well then we'll take it in the other direction does that make sense to everybody we're not really interested in in being correct about predicting the market what we're looking for is we're looking for the market to show us uh, an indication of what might happen and leave us that little bit of evidence so that we can actually take that trade all right so Aussie dollar let's keep our eyes to it there's nothing happening right now let's move on euro USD okay euro USD we took a an inside candle trade right there based on fundamentals and we got stopped out over here okay so now we took half the risk as normal so we lost approximately 50 50 dollars on this one and we got stopped out um, that move was caused by 
the members in uh, in the ECB members contradicted uh, Mr Draghi's uh, earlier statement of we we want to do more stimulus and they're basically saying the opposite okay so when they said the opposite it gave more strength to the euro and the euro went up now looking at this particular chart I, ca I can't really see anything that's occurring there's only a couple of things that I can think of I'll just show them to you the first is I'm interested in this area here it's a little bit of a hot spot area and the reason is you can see the markets bounced off it a couple of times there and then we've here when it's come back to that area there it's shot off it so we're approaching it again it's not a good enough reason really for me to just straight out take a trade on it but it is an area that I've got my eye on and 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 I know that the market has not stayed in that area for long so I will look to see if I get a nice setup or anything along those lines so that's the first thing the second thing is the moving averages have crossed over here meaning I'm in a position to start looking for long price action trades now what that actually means is I need to wait for uh, to to get a fractal down the bottom so I could it could be something like this it could look a little bit like this and then you get the candle with a fractal which gives you the setup to shoot up towards that region it's not quite there yet okay and this week we could see like a big candle just like that or we could see a candle in the other in the other direction so it doesn't matter um, let's just wait let's just see what happens and let's see what shows up at the moment even if you do trade price action you're probably going to need one two three candles before you get a setup which would be the day of of the announcement so you're probably going to be protected on that front but keep an eye on that um, right now there's nothing on this particular chart okay other than if you still very stubborn on the fundamentals and you just want to be short okay all right let's move on GBP USD okay this is a nice one this is a really good setup this is a, uh, the kind of trade that uh, I have that really nice warm fuzzy feeling when I see it it's not ready right now hopefully it's ready tomorrow morning can everybody see it it looks like we're going to get an inside candle set up over there and tomorrow if it is an inside candle we should get the fractal show up there which means you can place your pending order at the break and essentially you could be set for uh, for a, a trade back down off off the wedge now I'm hoping that this remains an inside candle because that means I could possibly get triggered into the trade tomorrow being Tuesday Wednesday so it could give me three days in the trade before the announcement okay question being asked what are my moving averages it's a 24 and a 12 EMA it's a 24 and a 12 EMA as per the price action in a trend class okay all right so so GBP USD look out if it's set you'll get a Twitter message tomorrow that it's set and you'll be ready to place your um, your order the other thing that I also like about this particular trade apart the fact that it's inside this pattern that we've been tracking and it's right on the fringe on the fringe is the fact that it's also where if we look at the moving averages we're still looking for for pullbacks and selling opportunities now last week we took this one I forgot to mention that can I get a try a uh, show of hands who who um, you uh, took this trade last week we called it out we, we took a full risk trade on it we didn't this the second target was there that was t2 I was very very almost there but I hit T1 and then got stopped out on on 
on the second half of the trade for uh, zero. So I still made half my, my profit on the trade. Only one person took the trade. Can I just get a show of hands? I've got two, three, four. Okay, good. A few of you took the trade. Who saw the trade but was afraid to take the trade or didn't like it? Can I just get a, a show of hands? There's quite a few people in the room. I just, just want to get a feel. If you saw it, but you didn't take it. Well, I know for a fact that everybody was in that was in uh, the class saw it because I called it out. So I just want to see. Okay, one, two. Okay, all right. Not to worry. This one, it looks like it's going to be set as well. So look out for this one tomorrow when this candle current candle finishes. We should we will know. Now, of course, it can get spoiled. London could come on and this candle turns out to be like that. Let's say if that candle is like that, is that a trade for us? Okay, so we've got a 50-50 split here. A roughly 50-50 split. That to me, was a it looks like it would be a, a good bull candle. The, the only thing that I would be concerned, right now it's just got this amount of wick. It's just a little bit of a wick. So if this turned, uh, okay, if it got to that level, the wick would be this long like this. The candle would look like that. Let's say the candle looked like that. Would you be happy to trade it? Up. Okay, good, good. So, because this could happen, guys. Tomorrow morning, we could look at this trade, and if we take this trade up, it's got nothing to do with being in a downtrend. It's got to do with breaking out of this wedge that we've been following for such a long time. Okay, so, so this trade could be set tomorrow. So, if the current candle tomorrow morning when I look, if it looks like this, well then it could be ready for a, for a buy, okay? But we won't know until tomorrow. Until then, we can just relax and watch it. And, uh, I'll, I'll send out the message tomorrow either way, okay? All right, let's carry on. Have a look at gold. Gold is very indecisive at the moment. It's just going a little bit sideways. There was, I noticed, an inside candle set up in a downtrend. See, we're, there's the, we're in a downtrend, okay? And we had inside candles there. However, we never broke it. We didn't break it, so then we got a third inside candle, never broke it, and then it broke to the top side. So, the, no trade actually ended up occurring, all right? So it's a good example of how price action can protect you from from a trade, all right? So there was a setup there, but it would never actually triggered. So there's nothing. Let me just step a time zone on this one because this chart looks really bad. Okay, I'm trying to find a level of interest. So what I've done is I've stepped into a four hour chart and I've got a little bit of a level of interest, but I'm, I'm not willing, I can't, I'm not allowed to trade this one, okay, because this is still only the second touch, okay? Um, but I'm interested in this level up here. 
Now, I don't know if we're going to get there, but if we do get there, then I'm interested in, in this in looking for something along those lines there. Okay, we're still a, a fair bit away from there. That, that's a, a level at around about 105. Okay, um, let's see what this looks like on a daily. It's still early early days to see if this turns out to be a channel. I can't confirm it yet, but just experience tells me that I might be interested in this trade around about there. Okay, so I'm just going to leave these lines uh, on my chart as, as it is, and uh, I'll just wait and see what happens. Right now, I can't take a trade. It's just very, very messy, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave it alone. Okay, let's move on. Let's have a look at the USCN. Okay, this chart does not look familiar. Oh, I can't remember. I had marked out a congestion zone and we broke out of it. We broke out of it nicely. It's not a classic breakout because we had previously been in this congestion zone over there. So they're kind of like, it's very odd to see it come back out into we were already here for it to come back into here. This is a very odd looking chart. Um, I don't have enough references, mental references of remembering such an event. So at the moment, let me get rid of that. Bear in mind that I'm very pro US yen, okay? However, we've just, we're just starting to cross over which would mean we can, we are now ready to look for cells. So what we can do here is we would need to wait for some kind of a pullback. If we get the price action on the pullback, then we would be ready to sell into the US yen. Now, this may not happen. I don't know. I don't have any, there's only one other thing that I can see, but I'll show it to you. Give me one second. Okay, the only th thing I do not like about this line is the fact that we had this one crazy candle, which kind of skewers everything. Now that candle was a 565 pip candle, so you can see what I mean by one crazy candle. Now, if let's see what this line looks at. Like. If I zoom out, if that line if we're happy with this line as some kind of support, okay, if we're happy with it, could we be on the verge of getting a setup? Yes or no? Okay, everybody is pretty much saying yes. So, if tomorrow at nine o'clock when we have a look at our charts and the, if the candles look exactly like they are now or even if this one is a little bit higher like for example like that and it's green who would be willing to place pending orders and trade this up So you would have a fractal there tomorrow and basically you'd have a pending order to trade on the break. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, all right then. So more people said yes than no. So what I'll do then, I will look at this one. Okay, I'll leave the line there. Even though we're just starting to cross to consider downward, okay, support lines like this are usually very very strong the only thing the only thing I don't like about this one is this candle okay which I'm using to to start the whole process off okay so but all right everybody seems to be comfortable with it so what we'll do is we'll keep an eye on this one tomorrow and um, if the candle remains an inside candle we will have 
the opportunity to place a pending buy stop um, for a movement upwards and it's not a bad trade to be honest because I'm still pro US yen so I'll keep an eye on this one and let's see what the market shows us okay let's move on euro yen okay I found thus a falling wedge what do we think of this pattern are we happy with the the lines where they're located and how they're all situated we've got one two three and we got one and two they look pretty good to me let me zoom in a little bit so with that being the case we never got the opportunity and on top of that we had traded the euro usd last week so we traded the euro with the euro us um, and we didn't so so we never took this trade last week and the, and there really wasn't one there so what we're going to be looking for is well we know what we're looking for we're looking for activity on the perimeters all right now I don't know how volatile this was going to be because this is a non USD pair so you could also look for a, a fractal situation here with like an inside candle or an engulfing candle and try and trade up the only problem is if you do if we do get that set up we need to make sure that we've at least got enough room to get to one-to-one -one by this line okay does everybody know and understand what I'm talking about so let me draw what could possibly happen so we we might get this candle like this for example and then the next day we get a a candle like this that would give us a fractal over here and we would have the opportunity to put a pending order to try and trade in this direction now what I'm talking about is I want to make sure that the stop that there's enough room before you get to this line okay at least the one-to-one -one point if the two-to-one point is out there okay usually if I was to take this trade and the two-to-one point is outside usually what I do is if it breaks I just stretch it out and I go through the three to one because if it does break and it's good it'll really push out okay so that's what I'm trying to talk about so we can look for this trade now I don't we're not there yet we need this candle tomorrow's candle so Tuesday morning by Wednesday morning so this this trade is one day behind all the others on the assumption that you know tomorrow we get an inside candle or or, a, or an engulfing candle okay but keep an eye on it the the pattern is good um, alternatively it may just keep on going down to look look for the trades always look for the trades on the perimeters on the perimeters it's our bread and butter trade all right okay let's carry on let's have a look at the Kiwi dollar Kiwi dollar we saw this pattern uh, we started tracking this channel last week we're still within it this was the result of the big hype that took place last Wednesday I think it was uh, on the Kiwi dollar Wednesday morning and if we look at this setup we've we're closer to the to the fringe down here so we can look to see if we do have some kind of a pullback to get into there also you can look for long trades from this moment onwards actually looking at this there was actually one here it's a big engulfing candle right there did anybody take this trade 
I didn't see it, so it's a no for me. So based on, sometimes what you can do is when you see a setup and it's a clean setup, okay, but you see the setup late, what I like to do is I like to pretend that I was in the trade and if I have, if I would have already reached my one-to-one -one point in the trade, well then I don't consider taking the trade. Now, had I taken this trade, I would have been in the trade I have to wait for this fractal to form. So I would have been in the trade here, right there. Okay, which means my stop would have been here. My one to one would have been about there. So this, in this example, I would not have hit my one to one as yet. So if I wanted to take this trade, um, I can still get in at a cheaper price. Okay, now. I know that this week everybody's probably feeling a little bit sen sensitive and going long Kiwi dollar basically means you're going against any Fed decision, okay, pro decision. So you, what you have to remember guys is that it doesn't matter if 99% or if everybody thinks that they're going to rate the the they're going to rate raise rates sorry until they do it it has not been done okay which basically also means if they said no this currency would, would skyrocket okay so that decision will can either help this trade or not help it in the same token are you understanding the message that I'm that I'm trying to send you so at some point you need to make a decision do you trade on hype hype that it may go up or do you trade on what you see okay and there's a big difference all right and if you the, the quicker you come up with a style for yourself on doing this the less the easier it will be for you to pull the trigger because if when you when you're influenced too much by what's what you think is going to happen and what you're seeing the, the, the chart could be saying buy and the, the, what we think might happen could be a sell. So now there's confusion. And then what happens is you end up doing nothing. Okay. So having said that, does anybody want to trade this? In theory, we've got a, uh, we've got an entry. Is it a valid entry? It's a pretty valid entry. And yet still, well, this is a good exercise. I've got about 90% of you saying no. Okay. So, and, and the reason I, I dare say that 90% of you are thinking no is because we're all afraid that we're going to be trading against what's going to happen on Thursday morning okay so this is a really good lesson in itself to see how we're influenced by all these things on the outside okay so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to trade it but I'm not going to trade it at market all right I'm gonna so sometimes just I, I need to do this for one reason only to make sure that I stay true to my technicals okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a pending order and I'm probably going to place it about here, about there. I'm going to put my stop where it's supposed to go, and I'm going to cut this trade to risk only $50. So I'm not going to take my normal full $100 risk on the trade. Now, by changing the dynamics of the trade, my target, my one-to-one -one point is going to be over there, which is still underneath that cluster. Does everybody understand how I've shaped the trade and the reasons why I've done it this way and why I'm still deciding to take this trade even though it's it seems stupid? Okay, technically this is a correct trade. All right, so from a technical point of view, there's nothing wrong with it. And if I get triggered in this trade and then on Thursday there's no movement in, in, in the rates, we could be up here, 
okay so I don't know what's going to happen so I'm going to place it here we go give me one second so it's going to be about an 80 point stop I'm going to trade at about 62 cents per pip so let's make it 50 USD cents so that's correct 50 so so that's 50 and I'm going to place my stop I said here 65 68 And I'll adjust this one in one moment. Let's make it 68 just for now. And there it is. Okay. So I may get triggered in the trade. I may not get triggered. I don't know. Um, but I, I'm willing to, to attempt the trade. So what I'm hoping, let me just measure this out. Okay. I'm just going to adjust my, well actually, I'll leave it as it is, okay, I, I'm, I'm, that's close to, to 3 to 1, target's about 2.6, and what I'll do is if I get to 1 to 1, I will uh, close out half the trade, okay, alright, so that's the Kiwi Dollar, that's the plan, so we've placed the pending order, um, I think I'm the only one that's placed it, but uh, let's move on. Euro AUD. Okay, Euro AUD. Let me just. This chart's been horrible. Hasn't really shown me anything at all. It's still horrible. We could be about to start an uptrend. Okay, we could be about to start an uptrend, which basically means we can st start to look for pullbacks before doing these types of trades, where it's probably not going to happen this week. We're probably going to need at least about six, seven candles for that to occur, which obviously we only get five in a week, so it's not going to happen this week. But just, just look at it. Let me see if there's anything else. Let me drop down a time frame no, no nothing at all okay so all right let me recap if you have questions um, please type them in. Someone saying, Todd, it's a 12, 24, 12 crossover. Yes, but that's not a reason to take a trade. It's just the crossover simply telling me that um, the way that we defined trend is that we could now be uh, in an uptrend, meaning we would only be looking for buy situations if we're just strictly trying to trade off the trend. Okay. All right. Aussie dollar. We're in this wedge um, sorry, converging triangle. We're going to wait to see what happens towards the perimeters. Okay, Euro USD. We're looking for. Well, we've just started, and it could, we could be starting into an uptrend. So we're going to look to see if anything shows up. I don't think we're going to get a technical setup on the Euro USD uh, pre FOMC announcement. Okay. GBP USD. This is a nice one. This is the best looking trade that I've got for you this week. But I need to wait for tomorrow. If I get the confirmation, we've got an inside candle in a falling wedge, so we would be ready to place a pending sell. Gold on a four-hour chart. We're just starting to see what might look like a, a bit of a channel. So let's just monitor that. US yen. We've drawn in a support line. Let's see if the current candle holds. 
Okay, and if it does, we could get an inside candle for an opportunity to go long tomorrow. Euro yen uh, falling wedge. Uh, we can be looking for the pullback buy. All right, We're, this one, if it happens, probably Thursday, Friday, uh, Wednesday to, towards Thursday. Okay, so we're still a little bit away from that. Kiwi dollar, we've placed a pending buy limit at 66.508. My stop is 65.68. My target is 68.70. Okay. And Euro AUD, basically nothing's really happening. We're just starting a crossover towards what we could be the start of an uptrend. Okay. Any questions on anything? Does anybody want me to have a look at Anything in particular? While well, I've got a little bit of time. My Twitter is at chat FX. So just follow me. If you turn on notifications, uh, you will receive it like an SMS. Okay. Aussie Kiwi, someone wants me to have a look at that. Give me one moment. Let's have a look. Aussie Kiwi. Very smooth chart. I like that. I like charts that are very smooth. See how smooth this is? Let's see if this move chart tells us something. Okay, there's something here. There's a really, there's a really nice hot spot right here. It's um, it's a 78 fib fib level, and it's also on a support line. Okay, so this is a hot spot right there. Um, there's an opportunity for this type of trade. Okay, it's not quite set yet. If we're going to apply proper price action trading, and you're going to have to wait. Oh, this candle's already starting to move away. Well, you just have to wait and see. Okay, so if Feds goes, if they increase, Aussie Kiwi should drop, give you the setup, and you might get it like this. Okay, so there you go. Any other questions, guys? No, we're all good. Okay, um, we're winding up towards the the end of the year. The market starts to get norm. Traditionally, the market will get slow. This week would already start to be slow, but because there's so much anticipation with the FOMC meeting, um, and there's all this positioning, profit taking, and everything else that's going on, this market this week will be a, a normal trading week. In, in fact, if anything, it's going to be a little bit on the volatile side, which is good for trading. Um, probably what you'll see is next week will start to slow down a little bit. I'll send out an email and I'll announce what the format will be. I'll probably take uh, during the Christmas break period, it's a good opportunity for you to look at charts and practice things. The market is a little bit on the slower side. Um, normally, I don't trade. I stop trading usually, for me, usually around about the 15th of December to about the 15th of January. I, I need to give my eyes a rest. Um, but this week is a normal trading week, so I'm trading this week. 
we'll, I'll be doing the class next Monday and I'll announce what's going to happen um, as we resume into the new year. Okay, uh, this Thursday uh, class is as normal, 3.30. Okay, so I, I forgot what we're up to. I've just got a mind blank. So I'll dig into my schedule and we will continue on with whatever we're up to. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, send me your emails, screenshots, please. It makes it easier for me. And I'll see you all on Thursday at 3.30. Bye for now.